Welcome to session 9 in our series on electricity and magnetism. In our last session, we learned about how electrons have a characteristic called spin, and associated with that spin is a magnetic field. Essentially, electrons act like tiny electronic electromagnets. Now, in most elements, that electronic electromagnetic uh, field is pretty much canceled by the configuration of the electrons. In a limited number of elements and certain man-made alloys, we find that the uh, electron spins are free enough to interact and the magnetic fields to self-align and self-magnetize into regions that we call domains. And what that allows us to do is two things happen. Let's take this coil of wire, and if we were to energize it, we would produce a magnetic field. If we were to place that ferromagnetic material in there, two things would be changing. One is the, elect the, the ferromagnetic material would magnetize, so it would become a magnet. The other thing is, the material that we put in here would multiply the magnetic field that the coil by itself would produce. So let's explore those two ideas. So we have here a coil of wire it's sitting on a scale. And uh, let's take a close-up of the scale here so you can uh, see what's going on. You notice that this coil weighs about six pounds. And the needle is pointing over here, and there's two, two little marks. The space between those two little marks is a quarter of a pound. That's all. Now I'm going to take this piece of steel, and I'm going to hold it in the coil center, which is open. There's an air core in the middle. And when I energize it, it's going to tug on the, on the steel, and I'm going to try to maximize maximize the pull and you'll see we went to the upper the upper little mark there that's the most we can get out of this I'm getting a quarter of a pound of pull I can feel it but it's not a lot okay now we're gonna fill this with a steel core it's a ferromagnetic alloy And now you'll notice that the coil and the core weigh nine pounds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place this piece of steel here on top. I'm going to hold it and energize the coil and lift it. I'm going to pull on the piece of steel and notice what happens to the scale. I have picked up the entire nine pounds with the same coil. So we went from a quarter of a pound with just the coil to nine pounds when we put the steel core in there. That's a 36 to 1 advantage. Now when we're able to put the entire magnetic circuit in steel, in permeable steel, we reinforce the magnetic field of just the coil by far more than the 36 to 1. So let's do a, another demonstration with another piece of equipment. And we'll move this out of the way. So 
So here is um, a little solenoid, and I've got it connected to a uh, gauge that measures force. Let's get a close-up of that. Turn it sideways. So here's the, the coil of wire. It's got a steel core, a plunger. It's a steel core and steel around the outside. And it's connected to the, to the scale. Now let me, it's probably pretty hard to tell what's really happening here. So I have a little wooden model. This is a wooden model of what we're looking at down here. This represents the steel on the outside and here's the plunger which is also made of steel. Uh, the brown coloring represents that tape underneath that is magnet wire. So this is, an, this is a coil of wire and this is a cutaway of what's inside. So all of the steel here, all of the magnetic circuit is in steel. And then that represents a cut of the windings of magnet wire that would be going around the plunger. So let's uh, get the battery ready for this. And while we're doing it, we're going to measure how much electricity we're using. Zero. Oops. Okay. Now, before we do anything, I want to show you how much force it takes to hold this down all the way. Let's take a look at the gauge. We're looking at the outer, the outer numbers, the outer numbers here. Those are in pounds. And to hold this down all the way it takes about 43 pounds. All right, 43 pounds. Now I'm going to activate the solenoid. It's not strong enough to pull it down. Let's take a look at the amperage that's being used. Now there's a decimal between the 1 and the 5, so it's about 1.6 amps, and there we go. And now we are holding, we are holding the 43 pounds with the 1.6 amps, and we're able to do that with that tiny solenoid because of the steel core. I'm going to turn it off now. So you can see the tremendous multiplication of the power that tiny coil of wire was able to hold the 43 pounds because it had steel with the entire magnetic circuit was in steel. Let's take a look at how far we've come from when we started talking about electromagnetism. <clears throat> so. You remember the green wire, and we had to run several hundred amps through here just to get this magnet to spin. You remember that? 200, 250 amps just to get the magnet to spin. Then we realized, you know, if we made a loop like that, we could triple the magnetic field here that we were getting that same distance, the radius away here. So we tripled it by making a loop. Actually pi, but three is close enough. <laughs> then we realized we could multiply it further if we did multiple turns. It would be three times the number of turns. And we use this piece of equipment. 50 turns times three was 150 times whatever the electricity was going through here. And so we were able to do that with only an amp and a half. Now, what we learned today is when we insert, I'll use this, it's convenient, a piece of steel in here, we multiply the effect of the coil further. 
and in many applications when the entire magnetic circuit is in the steel we multiply the effect of the coil by a hundred to a thousand times and that is why all of our electromagnetic equipment for our power industry has steel in its core. Here are some examples of things we'll be looking at in the future. Here is a uh, commutator type rotor. There's the windings, but notice the steel that's required to really make powerful electromagnets. And then these are the field magnets. These are the field magnets for that similar kind of rotor. And in order to make this a powerful electromagnet, we need to use the special steels that we use for electricity. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this session. Um, in the next session, we are going to learn about electric motors and some of their applications. So thanks for coming. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.